In deep learning, it's common to see a lot of discussions around tensor as the cornerstone data structure. Tensor even appears in name of Google's flagship machine learning library, TensorFlow. Tensor are a type of data structure used in linear algebra, and like vectors, like uh, matrices, you can perform some mathematical operations with Tensor. In these videos, you will discover what Tensor are and how to manipulate them in Python with NumPy. Mathematically, a tensor is a generalization of vectors and matrices. With the context of TensorFlow, a tensor is considered as a multi-dimensional uh, array. With the use of NumPy methods, it's possible for us to communicate um, with the tensor uh, with the use of a NumPy array. In that case, here you can see that tensor can be explicitly converted to NumPy and the array's objects into a tensorful object. So similar to NumPy and the array's tensorful objects, um, tensor objects have a data type and also have a shape. And of course, their mathematical operations are also similar to NumPy. However, unlike NumPy array, tensorful objects, um, tensors, can be backed or can be accelerated by the accelerator memory. It means that it's possible for us to use um, the GPU or even the TPUs for them to improve or to accelerate the mathematical operations. TensorFlow offer a rich libraries of operations that consume and produce um, TensorFlow's objects, such as the tf.add, um, that is the addition functions, and such as the tf.matmul, that is the matrix uh, manipulations, and so and so. Uh, these operations automatically convert uh, native Python types. Let's have a very quick example for a additions and also for a matrix multiplications mathematical operations. Uh, first thing first, we import the tensorflow and then we try to use the tensorflow.add functions to add two vector together. On the other hand, for the um, TF that matrix manipulations, we try to create two matrices or you can consider this like a two uh, vectors that they try to uh, multiply by each other's. Of course, the first, um, the first matrix, we try to set it as a shape that is one, two. And then the second matrix, um, we set a shape that is equals to two, one. And then in that case, we can perform that um, the matrix multiplications. That's one cell. And you can see that. Um, for the first, um, the tensorflow addition functions, uh, we created two vectors, that is one three plus five sevens, and then it will add, this, um, add these two elements, uh, that is one five, and then it will again add these two elements, uh, three plus seven. So it's just like a element rise uh, mathematical operations. And then for the matrix multiplications, and you can see that um, we have that um, 26, that is um, one, three, uh, one three, and then multiply by five sevens. And then later on, we just uh, sum, sum up all these elements together um, to get the matrix multiplications results. Now, if we move on, uh, we can try to understand the NumPy, uh, because now we know that TensorFlow is actually, uh, I mean, sorry, I mean, Tensor is actually quite similar to NumPy and in, in terms of the operations. So now let's try to understand the NumPy. Uh, and first thing first, we try to understand the access, rank, and also dimensions of the NumPy. Um, um, in Python, you know, the NIST can also, the tuple can actually store it by an array, which can be a 1D array, just like a vector, or 2D array, just like a matrix, or even higher dimension, just like this 3D array.
And to improve the computational efficiency, uh, NumPy requires each array with fixed structure. And that structure is can be defined by shapes. Let's take a look on an example in order for us to understand what is a 1D, 2D, and also 3D NumPy array. First thing first, we import the NumPy as MP. And here you can see that we try to use one layer of bracket and put everything inside this one layer of bracket to create a 1D shape or 1D array. On the other hand, in order for us to create a 2D shape or 2D array, we need to have two layers of brackets. And then the first layer is 1-2, and then the first layer is 3-4, and then the, for the second layer, that is um, another bracket that is outside this 1-2-3-4 group all these um, three. So we just try to put everything inside this uh, a and other brackets in order for us to create a, another a 2D array. And then let me show you the result first. And then you can see that the shape is like a four commerce. And then um, there's nothing here. That means it's just like a 1D array uh, with four elements. And then for the second one, that is a two by two matrix. And just like these 2D array, one, two, three, four. Remember that we use um, the brackets to separate, um, that, that to define whether it's a 1D, 2D, or a 3D, or even higher dimensions in the array. Now let's move on to the, um, to the 3D array. We can consider a 3D array. Um, the arrangement is like this. We have three levels. The first level is one, two, three, four matrix, and the second level is one, two, three, four matrix, and the final level is another one, two, three, four matrix. And then we can have a larger bracket or the, the another bracket, and then with some com with two commas to separate them into um, to separate them to separate each of the matrix, and then we can group everything uh, inside these larger brackets. And similarly to how we create a 2D array, we can just uh, continue to separate them with another two level of brackets, just like what we show here. And finally, we can put everything together into this uh, MP array function to create a 3D array. Now, if I run this out, you can see that uh, we have three matrix. That is um, what we show here. And then for each of the matrix, um, we, that is a two by two matrix. So uh, we have three matrix and each of them is two by two, um, just like what we show here. And finally, um, we can try to understand um, uh, uh, how these operate. Um, there's two uh, we mark. The first remark is that um, elements from left to right in the shapes represent the layers of arrays from outside to inside. For example, we have a shape two, three, represent that there are two subarrays, and then inside each of the two subarrays, there are three elements. And then say, for example, we have another shape that is two, three, four. That means uh, it represents that there are two subarray, uh, and inside each of the two subarrays, there are another three subarrays, and then inside each of the three subarrays, there are four elements. Therefore, we can try to understand that uh, the elements from left to right in the shapes represent the layer of array from outside to inside. Um, on the other hand, the in NumPy dimensions are called S's, and then the number of S's is actually Wang. So sometimes you might heard that some uh, some people might think that's Wang one, Wang two matrix, and in each of the S's, the number of elements are called dimensions or the length. So for example, the shape a uh, that is uh, a one two three uh, four five six. This is the, has a shape that is a two three. Therefore, it has two axes, and then the first axis is uh, one two three, 
and then the second access is 456. And then in the first access, it has it act, actually has the two dimensions because it has a one, two, three, and four, five, six. Therefore, it has um, two dimensions. And then in the second access, it has a three dimensions. That is a one, two, three inside this asset, and then four, five, six inside this this asset. And then we typically refer a one D array as a vector, and two D array as a matrix. Hence, say for example, at the very beginning, we have a shape for commerce without anything. That is a four dimensions vector. And then we also have another two by two matrix uh, that has a shape two by two. It's a two by two matrix. So we got the one D arrays as a vector and two D array as a matrix. To avoid any confusions, we followed uh, NumPy's logic. That's it. 1D is an array with one axis, 2D is an array with two axis, and 3D is an array with three axis, and so on. In this video, we just had a very quick introduction of tensors and how it is related to NumPy. In addition, we also introduced the structure and shapes of NumPy. In the next video, we will talk about the basic properties and attributes of NumPy. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.